Welcome to What's Next ATL, powered by the Atlanta Regional Commission, where we explore the big new ideas shaping Metro Atlanta. I'm Kate Sweeney. We start today at a stream, a ditch really, that runs along a residential street in East Point, south of Atlanta. I'm here with East Point resident, Hannah Palmer, and we look pretty weird, me with my microphone, both of us leaning way over to see the stream. And so it's not exactly surprising when a neighbor walking by wonders what we're up to. My name's to. Anna Palmer. Dorothy Hanks. Very nice to meet you. So you, did you know this is the Flint River? No. A lot of people don't know. Well, how would you know, right? <laughs> how would I know? <laughs> Dorothy Hanks tells us she's taken a walk through her neighborhood just about every day for the nearly 30 years she's lived here. But like many people, she had no idea that this little creek is actually the starting point of the Flint, Georgia's second longest river. They built the airport on top of a river, basically. <laughs> wow, I never knew that. A lot of people don't know it's there because from here it just runs up to Delta, their corporate headquarters, and then it goes into a pipe under the airport for two miles. That's Atlanta's airport. That's right, Hartsfield-Jackson, built atop a river. Today, we're learning all about a campaign that's using the Flint to push for green space and good development in the neighborhoods surrounding Atlanta's airport. I mean, you can just picture it, right? We're in this time and space in Metro Atlanta in which the folks that are talking about building get it. Today we explore Finding the Flint. So Hannah Palmer, who was giving us the trivia about the Flint River running under the airport, she co-runs the Finding the Flint campaign. Just around the corner from where we met Dorothy Hanks, Palmer gives me a vision of what could be. We're standing on the very busy Willingham Drive, where, once again, there's the Flint running along in a culvert beside the road. And yet there's no sidewalk. You'll see people walking it, biking it, wheelchairing it with no pedestrian infrastructure at all. So because there's a river here, we think that you could do some work to create parks and green space along Willingham and provide that connection for the community that's lacking. The grand vision of the Flint campaign includes a system of parks like the one Palmer has described, connected by pedestrian and bike trails all along the river. The river itself could be cleaned up and daylighted in many spots, except through Hartsfield Jackson itself. Now, you may hear this and think, hmm, this project sounds a lot like another project, the Atlanta Beltline. And in fact, Palmer's partner in the campaign is none other than Ryan Gravel, the man behind the Beltline's original vision of trails, transit, and affordable housing. Finding the Flint comes about as new development is starting to gain traction in the neighborhoods around the airport, like the Porsche headquarters in Hapeville, and the 300 plus acre mixed use development planned for College Park. As an East Point resident who was born and raised in the South Side, Palmer is excited about the new public art and cool restaurants that are coming along with the changes. But as with Gravel's original vision for the Beltline, finding the Flint is rooted in equity. Yes, we want all the good stuff. We want the Starbucks and we want the, all the same stuff the North Side has, but I'd like to see that development fit into the community here and you know, be designed so that everybody can access it. Um, every house I've ever lived in has been demolished or lost somehow because it's too close to the airport. Three childhood homes to be exact, and she's not alone. Entire neighborhoods, houses and all, were wiped off the map as the airport expanded in the last century on its way to becoming the nation's most traveled. Other communities were fractured, even today, as it makes its way through the Atlanta region before heading south and becoming a broader river, the Flint flows through no fewer than five municipalities. I think that's part of why we've kind of lost the river over time is because it seemed like somebody else's problem, somebody else's river. Um, there's not like a consistent vision that a city or municipality or a neighborhood could try to advocate for. That's because nobody feels ownership of it. Right. Finding the Flint has broadened that ownership. It's not just Hannah Palmer and Ryan Gravel. American Rivers, the Conservation Fund, Hartsfield Jackson Atlanta International Airport itself, and the Atlanta Regional Commission, or ARC, who puts out this podcast, 
all our partners in the project now, as well as all the metro communities that the FLIT runs through. And although the campaign's fairly new, things are happening. At least one set of forthcoming building plans already feature a Flint River Trail as a priority project. It's a start, hopes Hannah Palmer, in turning the river that was nobody's river into everybody's river. We'll be back to Hannah Palmer in a moment. But first, we want to hear from you. Each week on What's Next ATL, we'll ask you a listener poll question. And this week's question is simple. Have you ever seen the Flint River in Metro Atlanta? Let us know. Just go to whatsnextatl.org slash podcast and look for the poll question. There's even space to share your comments or stories if you want to give us a little context for your answer. We'll share the results in next week's show. We're back to our tour with Hannah Palmer of the Finding the Flint Project, which is bent on creating a network of parks and trails along the Flint River, which flows through the neighborhoods surrounding Atlantis Airport on the region's south side. Accordingly, our last stop is very near Hartsfield-Jackson. We are underneath Forest Parkway on the south side of the airport, um, just south of the fifth runway where the Flint River emerges from its long trip under the airport. And it's just, it's just free flowing here. It's just, it looks like, it looks like a regular creek. It's also like noticeably cooler whenever you get down on the water. You can just imagine this being a swimming hole back in the day. Palmer has interviewed old time residents who recall swimming and fishing in the Flint back when it was still on Atlanta's map. Of course, you can't really do that now. Too much runoff from the impervious surfaces that surround it. But these challenges, the pollution, the patchwork of city and county borders here, Palmer doesn't see these as insurmountable. It's just the Flint as it is now. Here's the place I've inherited. Here's this airport that's not going anywhere. Um, Here's these communities that are deeply rooted and really special. And let's look ahead and see how we can knit things together and create a better future for our kids. After all, even if the river looks like this now, it didn't always look this way. And it's the future she's betting on. That was our tour with Hannah Palmer of the Finding the Flint campaign. Palmer is also the author of a great memoir I can't recommend enough called Flight Path. You can find a link to that, as well as some great photos and some of the renderings from the Finding the Flint project at whatsnextatl.org slash podcast. So I wanted to do an episode about Finding the Flint because of the way it captures the imagination with the potential it has for knitting these communities together in a new way. But the Flint is also a natural resource. It's a real river and a real water source to much of Georgia. And that fact plays into this story too. So we brought in the Atlanta Regional Commission's Catherine Zitch to talk about all that. Catherine's a water planner with more than 20 years experience here in Metro Atlanta and across Georgia. She manages natural resources at ARC. Here's how she describes what she does. So my day-to-day job is really managing water resources across Metro Atlanta, including the Flint River, which starts on the southern end of Metro Atlanta. I'm really glad you're here to give us a little more detail sort of about what the deal is with the Flint River in Metro Atlanta. For example, along this tour, Hannah Palmer and I came across, you know, old tires and trash in little in the little ditches that the Flint runs in today. And the Flint runs through some industrial areas, especially south of Hartsville Jackson Airport. Um, yet Hannah Palmer told me, you know, she dreams of her kids and other kids actually playing in the Flint. Is that realistic? I, I do think it is. Now, it is an urban river, so you have to consider things about if you think take a street and what's in the street. When it rains, all of that goes into the river. But what we're talking about with finding the Flint is implementing natural barriers to help treat that pollution. So for instance, you could have a strip of land between the street and the stream, which as the water comes through, it would reduce many of the pollutants so that there's less in the stream. I live in Cobb County. My kids play in Soap Creek all the time. It's also an urban environment with streets next to rivers, but there's typically grass in between that helps treat those pollutants. And so I feel comfortable with my kids Uh, swimming in the streams, and I'm sure that we can get there with finding the Flint, knowing that it will always be an urban river. So there is work to do, but it's not, you know, the impossible dream by any extent. 
That's right. When we talk about water in Metro Atlanta, it's often about the Chattahoochee River or Lake Lanier, places where our water is coming from, where our drinking water is coming from. And of course, we hear a lot about the water wars among Georgia, Alabama, and Florida. So how does the Flint play into the picture of water sources in Metro Atlanta? Sure. I'm going to give you a long answer, and then maybe you can tell me what soundbite you might want. (laughs) I'm Um. keeping that in here, by the way. (laughs) Ah, Great. For Metro Atlanta, 6% of our water comes from the Flint River Basin. Roughly 72% is Chattahoochee River, so it's nowhere close to the significance of Lake Lanier and the Chattahoochee River. But still, that 6% is important to those folks that live on the South Metro side that get their water from the Flint River Basin. When you talk about finding the Flint, you say we. Um, Atlanta Regional Commission is indeed a partner on this project. Have you walked around some of these sites, seeing where the Flint is today and looking at uh, their potential for the future? I certainly have walked around some of these sites, and it is, I mean, you can just picture it, right? One of the things that really excites me about this project is we're in this time and space in Metro Atlanta in which the folks that are talking about building get it. And so when we come down there and we say, hey, you know, if you were just to tweak your design a little bit, it could really help the upper Flint Basin, they go, oh, yeah. I can do that. It's not just this vision that we're just falling on deaf ears. Was there a moment at which you recognized that? Like, oh, wow, this really does have buy-in? So when ARC became a part of the project team, and we went to some of our very first meetings, and we were talking to folks at the Aerotropolis. The Aerotropolis being this economic development partnership in the neighborhoods and and towns and areas around Hartsfield-Jackson Airport. Exactly right. And then the Aerotropolis said okay, give me a project. It's really looking at the Flint is part of the discussion because development is coming. Let's make it come in a better way in the sense of water. And just turning that tide is is an exciting space to be in. To coin a phrase. (laughs) (laughs) Catherine Zitch speaks in all water metaphors. 100%. It's a fact. (laughs) Thank you so much. Thanks, Kate. So, Metro Atlanta, keep an eye on this project or lend your voice to it. We list ways to get involved at whatsnextatl.org slash podcast. Of course, there's a lot at stake here, including equitable development. One of Finding the Flint's main goals is to involve real current day residents of the communities around the airport to create development that they want and that doesn't push them out as property values change. And that is a sticky wicket, as we'll discuss in our second episode of What's Next ATL. It's all about affordable housing and two lawmakers in very different parts of the region who have staked their careers on it. How do we get working class families and middle class families back up on an upwardly mobile economic track? And housing has to be the way you do it. New folks come in and they have the money to pay $1,800 for a rent, whereas the people that have been here for a while are like, why is this city so expensive now? The subject of affordable housing is such a critical one in Metro Atlanta and all over the country right now that we're dedicating two episodes this season to it. So stay tuned. We hope that you like what you're hearing so far on What's Next ATL. This is our very first episode, and we'd love your help getting the word out. It would mean a great deal if you'd share it with friends and give it some five-star ratings on iTunes. Every time you share it, that helps us to grow these critical conversations about where Metro Atlanta is headed. So thanks. And before we head out, you know, one other thing we learned while putting this story together is that Hannah Palmer loves the airport. She loves it so much that she shared with us several spots she routinely takes her two young sons to to see planes take off. It's one of their favorite things to do as a family. Our favorite spots are here along Loop Road on the north side of the airport. That's where you can see the most activity and there's a fire station here on the north side of the airport that has a parking lot and it's a great place to watch airplanes. Okay. Awesome. Are we getting sunburned or what? Probably. I was just I thinking was like, that. I, I was just thinking that. Sunblock. All right. So if you're watching planes take off and the sun's out, wear your sunblock. Thanks for listening.